जय हिंद एवरी वन आई एम श्रुति जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एम सी डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम ए के जी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज दैट इज अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज काजियाबाद टूडे द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज पॉइंटर्स इन सी दिस टॉपिक इज कवर्ड इन द सब्जेक्ट प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग यूजिंग सी द सब्जेक्ट कोड इज के सी ए वन जीरो टू एंड दिस इज द टारगेट स्टूडेंट्स फॉर दिस इज एम सी ए फर्स्ट ईयर स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट सेम so coming to pointers in c pointer <coughs> pointer is basically a variable that represents the location now when we are storing any value into the memory that value is stored at a certain address location so to access that variable to store that variable to access that variable we normally take it as a variable suppose i take it as int a equals to 5 so this a is a variable and this 5 is a value so in the memory this a is stored somewhere in the memory with a variable name a and the value 5 now <coughs> this pointer will be actually accessing the address that is at what place this variable is stored suppose this variable a is stored at the memory location 1000 so the pointer is a variable which will represent this and through this it will be representing the variable and it will not acts directly access the value 5 so in order to have like when we are using pointers the basic advantage of using the pointers is it enables to access a variable that is defined outside the function that is <coughs> it is used to globally access the variables it can be used to pass information back and forth between the functions and its reference point it is more efficient in handling data tables wherein we have the a lot of data stored both in rows and columns it reduces the length and the complexity of the program because we can directly access through the <coughs> address of the variable and sometimes it also increases the execution speed now like we have seen in the previous case that in the memory every stored data item occupies one or more contiguous memory cells that is in terms of bytes now one or more means one variable will be storing the value a at one particular place but suppose we are declaring an array or a structure there at multiple contiguous uh, memory locations will be allotted for a particular array or structure so the number of bytes required to store a data item it depends upon its type whether it is a char data type value or int or float or double so whenever we declare a variable the system allocates a memory location to hold the value of the variable and since every byte in the memory has a unique address this location will also have a unique address like we have seen in the previous case if we are storing a value int variable a with the value 5 so because int takes two byte of memory this will be taking two bytes of memory and the memory address of this could be any address at which it is stored so that could be 1000 or maybe any other address <coughs> so here we have taken an example here we have int xyz equals to 50 so this xyz is basically a variable this 50 is the value of the variable and 1380 is the address of the uh, variable is the address where this variable xyz is stored so this statement instructs the compiler to allocate a location for the integer variable xyz and put that value 50 into it now let us suppose the address location of this variable at what Uh, this variable is stored in the memory at a location that address is 1380 now since the memory addresses are simply the numbers they can be assigned to some variable that can be stored in the memory so we can also store these addresses into a variable because these are just the numbers so such variables that hold the memory address are called the pointers so all those variables which are storing the address of a variable those variables are known as the pointers since pointer is again a variable its value is also stored in some memory location that means where we are storing a pointer variable that again will have a memory address 
So considering <coughs> we have uh, this x, y, z, the one that we were talking over here, this is being carried forward later. So suppose we assign the address of x, y, z to a pointer variable p. Now this p will be pointing to the variable x, y, z. That means we already have the variable x, y, z in the memory. This is the variable x, y, z which is stored at the memory location 50 and it has the address 1380. Now we have a pointer variable will be storing this address 1380. So when this p will be storing this address 1380, we will be using the statement p is equal to ampersand x, y, z. So, this ampersand is basically storing the address of the variable x, y, z. So, this is basically a address of operator. This operator p equals to address of x, y, z. Here, the address of x, y, z that is 1380 will be stored in the variable p. Now, this variable p if I talk about the variable x, y, z, it is storing the value p at an address 1380. Now, this variable p again is storing a value this because it has to store the address and it also will have its own address that is 2545. So, the address of this p would be 2545. Now, how to access the address of a variable? For this, we have the ampersand sign or the address of operator. This operator immediately, <coughs> the operator and immediately preceding a variable returns the address of the variable. So, if I say that P is equal to address of X, Y, Z, that means this address of X, Y, Z that was initially 1380 in the previous slide here. So, this will be stored into the variable P. And the address of the variable P would be 2545. The address of operator can be used only with the simple variables or an array element. For example, this is a simple variable distance and we are storing the address or we are finding out the address of the distance. This is finding out the address of an array element the zeroth that is the first index the first variable the first value in a array and this is finding out the address of some random variable in an array but if we look into some of the illegal usage of uh, address of operator where the address of operator cannot be used it cannot be used directly with the values that is address of two th 235 this is you cannot find out the address or you cannot identify the address of a constant or int array 20 like this. If this is an array, ampersand array or address of array is not possible. We can point to the first element of a array. This is possible, but only this ampersand array is not possible. Similarly, we cannot point to the expression. We cannot find out the address of an expression. The address of a variable is possible. The address of the first uh, location of the array is possible. Coming to pointer declaration, the pointers are declared in this format wherein we have the data type, the asterisk which shows the pointer and then the variable or the pointer name. So, the three things, the first one is the asterisk that tells the variable pointer name is a pointer variable. As soon as we put this asterisk, this becomes a pointer variable. Pointer name, it needs a memory location. It will be storing a memory location or it will require a memory location. The pointer name points to a variable of <coughs> some data type. So, data type should match. If suppose I want to uh, store the address of, there should not be a mismatch. Like, if suppose I have, these are the two examples, int, uh, we are making a pointer variable of int type and a pointer variable of float type. Once a pointer variable has been declared, it can be made to point to a variable using an assignment operator. Like, I have a pointer variable and an int variable. So, P is equal to address of <coughs> XYZ will be storing the address of XYZ into 
P, where P is a pointer variable. This is known as a pointer initialization. But the thing that we were discussing earlier, that if I have a float type variable and an int type pointer variable, I cannot store the address of float over here in P because the memory locate the memory the size of the int data type and the size of the float data type are different that is why we, this is this will give you an error this is an erroneous output we always use the similar data type pointer variables if we want to store the vari uh, value of a uh, same data type <laughs> Next, assigning an absolute address to a pointer variable is again prohibited. We cannot store a constant value or an absolute value over here in a pointer variable because it basically stores the address of some other variable. Now, coming to an example, here what we have done is we have two variables a, b and we have an in data type variable c with a pointer variable. Now, in a, the first one is the simple calculation 4 multiplied by c plus 5. The other one, now what we are pointing this is, this p is pointing to the variable c. So, this p will be storing the address of c. Now, when we are using this pointer p, this pointer p will again access the value at c. So, what is happening basically in the memory, we have a variable c with the value 5. It might have a address suppose 1424. Now, this p which is a pointer variable, it will store this address. So, when we are using this pointer p, this pointer p what is it doing? It is identifying the value at this address that is 1424. Now, the value at this address 1424 is 5. So, pointer p will automatically take the variable 5 and will give you the same output as this. So, either you use c or you use a pointer variable pointer p that will give you the same result a equals to 40 and b equals to 40. <coughs> now, pointer expressions. We can add two pointers as well. So, like other variables, pointer variables can be used in different expressions. If suppose P1 and P2 are two pointers. So, in that case, we can add the two pointers. We are basically, what are we adding? Value at pointer P1 and value at pointer P2. We are basically adding the two values that are stored at the address where this P1 is locating. And we will be giving you the sum. Similarly, product will be multiplying the values that are located at the addresses of P1 and P2. Similarly, we can, we can use the brackets over here in order to get this. Or if we are doing it like this, pointer P1 is equal to pointer P1 plus 2. Now, what is it basically doing? Here, this pointer value at pointer P1 will be added by 2 and will be stored in the p1. Next, we can use a division operator as well. Now, what is actually allowed and what is not allowed while we are using the pointers? The first one, we can add an integer to a pointer the way we have seen over here. This is adding an integer to the pointer. We can also subtract an integer from the pointer, but we cannot add two pointers like this. If suppose I have two pointers of in data type pointer P1, pointer P2, I cannot do it as P1 is equal to P1 plus P2. That is, we cannot add the addresses directly. But yes, we can add the values plus pointer P2. This is valid, but without pointers, just adding the values or the addresses at P1 and P2 is not possible. Similarly, Multiplication or division is not possible. We can multiply or divide the values at these pointers like this or this. These two are possible, but directly multiplying or division is not possible. Next, coming to the scale factor. 
Now, as in the previous case, we have seen that an integer value can be added to or subtracted to a pointer variable. Now, what does that exactly mean? If suppose I am doing p1 is equal to p1 plus 1. So, this is basically not an integer. Now, what does the scale factor mean? If I talk about the char data type, it has a scale factor of 1. That means char takes 1 byte of memory uh, while you are declaring a variable or initializing a variable. Similarly, int takes 4 bytes, float takes 4 bytes and double takes 8 bytes of memory. So, as soon as I am incrementing a pointer variable p1++ and if this p1 is an integer pointer, in that case, it will increment the p1 by 4 bytes because an in data type takes the memory size of 4 bytes. So, if suppose I have at p1, suppose I have a variable a that is having the value stored as 5 and it is stored as a memory location 1400. This is a pointer p1 which is storing this 1400. Now, if I increment this p1, p1++, it will directly jump to 1404 and not 1401 because it is an int data type pointer value. So, this would be storing 4 bytes of memory and when you increment the pointer, it will move as per the integer size. Note. The exact scale factor may vary from one machine to another because at some places it takes two byte of memory whereas at some places or at some machines, some compilers, it uh, takes <coughs> four bytes of memory. So, in order to find out the exact memory, it, it's better to use the size of operator. As soon as you write size of data type, it will return the size of that particular data type that is being used in the memory. If suppose I want to find out the size of int, int. So, if it is taking 4 bytes of memory, it would return 4. Or if it is taking 2 bytes of memory, it will return 2. Now, how to pass pointers to functions? Functions can be accessed by two ways. The first one is call by value and the other one is call by reference. If we talk about the passing the arguments by value here, we are passing the values directly. So, in that case, in the memory, we have two, the uh, formal and the actual parameters will be stored at two separate locations and whatever changes we are making in the actual parameters, those changes will not be reflected into the form, uh, sorry, the changes that you are making in the formal parameters <coughs> will not be reflected into the actual parameters over here. But if you are passing the reference like this, we here we have passed the address of A and B. This A and B will be stored at only one place. The actual and the formal parameters will have the same memory location. And whatever changes we are making here will be directly reflected over here. So, if in the previous case you look at to the output A was 5, B was 5 because Actual and parameters, uh, actual and formal parameters were stored differently. There was no effect in the output. But once you pass the address, the actual and the formal parameters were uh, representing the same memory location, then the output differed. Now, pointers and arrays. So, when an array is declared, the base address of the location of the first element, the pointer is basically pointed to the first index of the array. So, if suppose we have this as an array int x equals to 5 wherein x stores the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in the memory how it will be stored? At index 0 the value 1, at index 1 it, the value 2 will be stored and so on and these are the addresses because it is an in data type variable. Therefore, there is an increment of 4 in all the addresses of the array. So, in order to access it, we have p equals to address of x0. So, this will basically access the address of the index variable that is the first index. 
So P is equal to ampersand x0 will be accessing the value 2500. Then address of x1 will directly point to 2504. And this is incremented by 1 over here, P plus 1. So if I do P plus 2, it will access the third element at an index uh, at the address this. And if I do the pointer at P plus i, it will give us the value of xi directly depending upon the values of i that we have. Now structures, if we talk about any structure, in that case, the structure definition is we have a structure wherein we have three variables, the roll numbers, departmental code, uh, department code and CGPA. One is of in data type, one is of care data type and the other one is of float data type. We have <coughs> this student structure, we have the variables of structure A, B and C. That is, these are basically the, the students. So, in order to access these, how do we do? We use a dot operator. We do it as A dot roll, B dot roll, C dot CGPA or A dot uh, DPT code. Like this, we can access the structure elements. Now, if we have, this was basically when we have the individual variables over here, A, B and C were the individual variables. But in case we need to have an array of uh, uh, maybe 100 students, in that case, we have class 100. This is again an array. Now, this array will be storing for each department code and CGPA. That means if I am doing it for class 0th index, the, this class 0th index will be accessing a separate, sorry, separate roll number. This class 0 will be having a separate departmental code. And this class 0 will be having a separate CGPA. Same goes for all other elements of the class. So, for accessing all these, we have declared a pointer variable. Now, this pointer variable will have a size of this structure, which will include the 4 bytes of int, 1 byte of char, and 4 bytes of float. So, if we do it, this, the name class represents the address of the 0th element of the structure array. Now, PTR is a pointer to the data objects of the type structure data. So, how do we assign? We assign it in this format, PTR is equal to class. So, this will assign the address of the class 0 to the pointer variable because it always uh, addresses to the first index of the array. <laughs> So, when the pointer PTR is incremented by 1, that is PTR plus 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 plus. So, that will uh, increase the size, that will increase as per the size of the structure like we have seen over here. So, whatever the size of the structure is there, that, that size will be allocated to the PTR. And when once you do PTR plus plus, it will directly jump to those number of memory locations to point to the next index. So, it is made to point uh, to the next record. So, once a PTR points to the structure variable, the members can be accessed by, this is known as the arrow operator. This, when you are pointing, when you are pointing the PTR to the row, roll number, for simple variables, we use a dot operator like a dot roll. But when we are pointing for any pointer variable, in that case, we have pointer pointing to the role. Similarly, PTR directly going for the departmental code and PTR going for the CGPA. <coughs> so, this symbol is known as the arrow operator. <coughs> so, when we are using the structure pointers, we should take care of the operator precedence. The member operator dot will have the higher precedence than the pointer operator. That means, if we are doing pointer pointing to the role or value at pointer dot role, that is the same thing because here it is accessing the address and here it is accessing the value at that particular address and then the roll number. 
but if you do it in this manner it will give you an error that is why it is necessary to put the arrows like this oh sorry the brackets like this similarly <coughs> if we are using the plus plus operator the pre increment operator so if you are doing like this what is it basically doing it is first going to identify the ptr role once the roll number is being identified then it will increment the roll number so it will increment the roll number and not the ptr so in case you want want to increase the pointer variable we need to put the brackets and then we need to access the roll number thank you